Welcome back everyone, I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. Today we'll continue our discussion of pi conjugated and aromatic molecules with lesson 4.5. In our last lesson we talked about how to tell whether molecules are aromatic or not, and this included a discussion of different types of elements that are not carbon, which may have lone pairs, and how those lone pairs may or may not be involved in providing the special stabilization that we call aromaticity to a given molecule. Now we're going to relate how this new type of stability we've just learned about might influence acidity and basicity of compounds that are aromatic. And I want to remind you about the Lewis definition of a base. A base will donate a lone pair. And if we think of a base donating a lone pair to an acid, we have this acid-base reaction. And whether we're talking about a classic sort of acid-base reaction, a Bronsted-Lowry or Arrhenius-type acid-base reaction, or some other type of base that just has a lone pair, we think about the base giving a lone pair to the acid. We also know that the strength of an acid is related to the stability of its conjugate base. So if we have an acid coming off here and an anion produced as the conjugate base, the more stable that conjugate base is, the more this equilibrium will lie to the right. So we say that this is a stronger and stronger acid, remembering that the pKa relates to the acid strength and if we push that equilibrium, the equilibrium constant given by Ka, we'll get a lower and lower value for the pKa, indicating a stronger and stronger acid. Now these general concepts of acid-base chemistry were discussed in lessons 1.9 and 1.10, if you'd like to go back and refer to those to refresh yourself in all these acid-base definitions. And having said all that, we now have to think about the extent to which we'll have donation of lone pairs on aromatic molecules to acids. So how good a base will these compounds be? Let's start with pyridine. If we think about pyridine, we know this is an aromatic molecule because you can delocalize six pi bonding electrons. Six is one of these Huckel rule number of electrons, 4n plus 2 equals 6 when n is 1. So pyridine is aromatic. It requires keeping all three of those pairs the six electrons that are delocalized to keep its aromatic stability. So can we give any of those electrons away to an acid and have the molecule still be aromatic? No, we need to keep those delocalized in the ring. But there is a pair of electrons on the N in the pyridine that could be donated to a proton. And since we're not using that lone pair to give the molecule the aromatic stability, this is perfectly acceptable. So pyridine can act as a reasonably good base. Well, what about imidazole? Let's consider whether this molecule is aromatic and which pairs need to be maintained by the molecule to keep that aromatic stability. Well, we have this nitrogen, which has a pi bond, and it has a lone pair. So if we think about which pair of electrons might be donated to the ring in terms of delocalization, we always choose the pi bond to delocalize instead of the lone pair for reasons we talked about in our previous lesson. We have this pi bond here that can be delocalized, and we have this lone pair right here. So that lone pair on the nitrogen that has no pi bonds will have to go into the system if that nitrogen is to participate in resonance around the ring. So we have one, two, three arrows, that's six electrons. This molecule is aromatic if and only if those three pairs of electrons stay delocalized in the ring. That means if I have an acid flow by, it can't possibly take that lone pair away from that nitrogen because that would destroy the aromaticity. But this nitrogen here, it does have a lone pair that's not tied up in its aromaticity, so I would be able to give that pair of electrons to an acid without losing the aromatic stability, so we can identify the site on the ring that's more basic. So just to summarize, if nitrogen B was to donate its lone pair to an acid, the molecule would lose its aromatic stability. That's very bad in terms of stability and favorability of the reaction. But nitrogen A can donate its lone pair with no problem. Nitrogen A can act as a base without any loss of aromatic stability for the compound, so imidazole as a whole molecule can in fact act as a base, and it's that particular nitrogen that is the basic site on the molecule. Finally, let us consider parole, this molecule at the bottom here. This molecule can use the lone pair on the nitrogen to participate in delocalization around the ring, to give us one, two, three arrows, that's six electrons delocalized. That's a Huckel number that's allowed to make this molecule aromatic. So taking that lone pair away would cause this molecule to become 
much, much less stable. And for this reason, parole is a much weaker base than either pyridine or imidazole, both of which have lone pairs that can be donated without losing that aromatic stability. You can extend this idea, and you could even write this down in the notes part of this page if you're following along in the book. You can extend this idea of looking at nitrogen lone pairs and nitrogen-containing organic compounds as potential bases and relate how good a base they are to the potential for losing stability if that lone pair is not kept on the molecule and instead is donated to an H plus to make a bond. So we have these two reactions. We have this vinyl group attached to an NH2 group, so vinylamine or ethylamine. So what's the difference between these two reactions? Which of these two is the stronger base? Well, we have to look at the molecule before the potential interaction with the proton and say, well, this lone pair is right beside a pi bond. So I have the potential for resonance with this molecule. This lone pair can't provide resonance stabilization. So if I was to take this lone pair away, it can't be delocalized in resonance if it's given to the hydrogen. right? If we donated the lone pair to the H, we'd have this. No more resonance stabilization from that lone pair. So we would lose some stability for this molecule if we lost the lone pair. But we don't lose any resonance stabilization energy for the ethylamine. So that makes this molecule, the vinylamine, a weaker base because you'd lose some stability from resonance by donating the lone pair away. And the ethylamine would have to be the stronger base. So you can extend the ideas we used related to aromaticity to resonance in general. So those examples provide some explanation for how aromaticity and aromatic stabilization might affect the basicity of specifically nitrogen-containing organic bases. What kind of influence could our new knowledge of aromatic stabilization have on understanding the acidity of different compounds? So, for example, if we consider cyclopentane versus cyclopentadiene, and I said, which is the stronger acid? Well, you'd have to think about taking the proton off of one of these compounds to leave the conjugate base. And in this case, you'd want to take off the most acidic proton, which would be the proton that would give you an anion here, because that anion would be able to engage in resonance with the adjacent pi bonds. Not only that, but in this case, you can have delocalization of three pairs of electrons, or six electrons, around the ring. That makes this conjugate base aromatic, which is much, much more stable even than a simple resonance-stabilized linear alkyl anion. We don't have any potential for extra stabilization of this conjugate base. And for that reason, the pKa of cyclopentane is greater than 50. But the pKa of cyclopentadiene is only 16. Remember that this is a logarithmic scale, so each change of 1 in the pKa is a change of tenfold. So the difference between 50 and 16, that's 34 log units. That means that you have 10 to the 34th times greater ability to deprotonate this in solution than the cyclopentane. And the reason is that your conjugate base is much, much more stable because it's aromatic for the cyclopentadiene example. So this lesson just serves to remind you about the general principles we learned about acid and base strengths and to relate the new knowledge we have of aromatic stabilization to the acidity and basicity of compounds.